Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of The Bullet. This the Trading Friday edition of The Bullet. My name is Paul Lathrop. I'm the Deputy Director of New Media for the Second Amendment Foundation. Joining me today, as he does every training, training Friday, is Tom Walls of the Firearms Academy of Seattle. And I have to be admit, I, I'm a little bit embarrassed because I was just talking with Tom, telling him how I had updated everything and uh, now everything was going to work so much better that that uh, now that uh, I'd done some work to um, I'd done some work to my restream and everything was going to come through and Facebook would be able to talk to YouTube YouTube would be able to talk to Facebook and I'd be able to see everything that was being said and we could get comments in and unfortunately um, I'm not picking up no that's not it I'm not picking up the broadcast so uh, I do want to invite everybody who's watching on YouTube however to go ahead and comment because I will see those comments I will get those comments up and 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 Tom and I will discuss them. But uh, let's go ahead and, and, and get started, Tom. Uh, first thing I want to I want to ask about today, and we 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 this was scheduled for two weeks ago. We kind of carried it over since I was not feeling well two weeks ago, and we didn't do the broadcast. But what, the topic for the day is is shooting specifically shooting handguns. Is that a martial art? That's an interesting topic, and I'm really looking forward to the comments on this. This isn't our, our usual training Friday, is it? We, instead no. of saying, this is how I teach, or this is the technique, or we're going to kind of bat around some ideas and almost philosophical. So um, assuming Mr. Murphy does not come back and visit your hardware or software anytime soon, he visits me on the range frequently. Uh, I will preface it by saying if you hear me do something talking about legal stuff, I am not an attorney. My opinions are my own and not necessarily those of the Firearms Academy of Seattle, but I do have them. So, um, martial arts. When we first kicked this around, Paul, I I got um, the wild hair to put this out on, on social media privately amongst my friends that were either martial artists of, of long-term or shooters, you know, serious long-term trained in multiple placed shooters, or occasionally there was some overlap. So I was able to get comments from senseis, sifus, professors, grandmasters, uh, instructors. I was able to get comments from uh, People in my end of the world, the defensive world where I tend to live for FAS, I got comments from, oh my goodness, I got a lot of cool comments. I got comments from martial arts, um, professional martial arts instructors that teach firearms professionally. So we got a wide variety. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even want to try to mention names as thank yous because I know I'll leave somebody out and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So y'all know who you are. Sure. The first thing that came up was, what is a martial art? What What is your opinion on that? I'd like to hear it. I know what mine is, and my wife tells me mine is not the only one in the world. Well, martial art to me, uh, martial means, martial in my mind, when, when I when I think of martial, it, it means war. So, art of war, going all, you know, Let's take it all the way back to Sun Tzu. Uh, yeah, it's 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 the the um, the study of fighting. Let's put it that way. I I, mean, I, I, I won't disagree with that. Uh, one person that made a comment. I will mention a name. Mark McYoung generously offered because he's a bit of a scholar. Is well. Mark Mark pointed out that the the word itself, martial, comes from the Roman god Mars. So we can't assign it only to what. I typically think of my default as the Asian martial arts. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking pre-broadcast about 
some stories that Bruce Lee actually popularized the term martial arts in the United States. Historically, from the Asian martial arts, and I don't speak Japanese, so I'm getting this like second and third hand, there were arts that, that were studied, they were studied formally, but for different reasons. And an excellent example of that that people might have some familiarity with is jujitsu or jujutsu. Mm -hmm. And that was the battlefield art that when you, you know, threw somebody or did something to somebody, you weren't going for submission. You were going to throw them and stick your knee in their way so their back would break. It was a unarmed battlefield art. Yes. Close quarter, nasty mayhem. And the problem with that sort of thing in a dojo or a dojang or kun or whatever your particular martial arts flavor calls the gym is that you break your partners. There was a gentleman named Jigoro Kano, Dr. Jigoro Kano, in Japan in the late 1890s. And he was a doctor of physical education, and his deal was jujitsu. He was a small statured fellow. He studied a lot of those things. You know, the typical I was bullied and picked on happens all over the world. It's just human nature. And he thought, this is really cool, but it tend to break your partners and get kind of busted up yourself. Let's modify and be selective in what we do and turn it into an art form, a competitive sport for him. So the term jutsu, meaning battlefield way, he changed that part of the word ju for ju, gentle or flowing, changed it to judo, the way of flowing art. He systematized it. He took out the nasty stuff. He modified the throws and the falling techniques to make it a safe thing. And we have now a fairly long-standing Olympic sport of judo. Yep. So let me let me get a let me get a comment in here real quick. Already cool. Uh, Billy and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly. La hole. Uh, My screen's all fuzzy, so I can't read it. Ah, I will try to clear that up for you one anyway, second you here. Uh, and there, there we go. And I might even be able to make it even better for you. There we go. Uh, Billy says, martial arts, often martial arts, any of various self-defense, such as Aikido, Karate, Judo, or Taekwondo, usually practice as a sport. Um, I got to say, as a, as a young man... Uh, I, I toyed around with and got myself hurt doing several times Taekwondo, um, which is on the fringes of martial, what most people consider martial arts. Um, I just, um, I, I, I quickly fell out of love with, with martial arts when after spending a whole lot of money i never really got any better i i i plateaued and then just said to hell with it so it's interesting taekwondo was a a discipline i taught diane and i both taught for over 13 years and is my my baseline martial art i've formally studied and have rank in five uh, everything from empty hands to sticks and swords and knives. And I've seen this conglomeration. And Billy, you're right. There are practices, sports, and it's almost uniquely American, isn't it? Mm. If you want to with stuff, what Americans but not Not do. if you watch Karate Kid 2, because in Karate Kid 2, it was practiced in wherever Mr. Miyagi's homeland Okinawa. was, but it wasn't. Yeah, Okinawa, there we go. No, Okinawa. <laughs> probably racist, but... Interestingly, the, the fellow that did the, uh, the stunts for, uh, for Pat Morita, a martial artist named Fumio Demura, died just a few weeks ago. So I oh. lost the martial Anyway, so the sport thing, that's, that's kind of one thing that came up. So we know that it's shooting is martial in the sense that we're certainly doing it to, to, to hurt somebody, and we can't, we can't pull our punches, so we have to modify the sport. Like, I can't straight punch somebody in the face more than once without getting thrown out of the gym. I can't be shooting a bad guy in the face if it's a real person because I get thrown into the jail. So yeah. you have to make 
you have to make accommodations. That's pretty common. But if learning a, a physical skill and you're competitive with it is a martial art, would there be competitive welding, competitive truck driving? There you is know, competitive with, truck driving, I'll tell you that right and now. And I know there is. There's competitive everything. I mean, this is America. Look, we invented MMA, one of the most effective martial styles uh, around combining the best of everything. And interestingly enough, again, in history, that's what Asian martial arts have all done. You look at Taekwondo. Well, cool news, dude. I've, I've got some stuff going on here. Um, when I tell you that that's a relatively new martial art, the name Taekwondo was developed in the 50s, and it was mostly political when North and South Korea split. That came from Taekyun, and there are substyles of that. The jujitsu styles have been recently modified. Aikido is not that old. Mm -hmm. That was Aikido from Aki Jujutsu, another example of the Jujutsu Judo thing. So where does the difference come in? If you, if you practice it diligently, I mean, I, I took a shop class, and, and I can do those things, and I've done them for, well, since junior high. I don't think it makes it an art. So where, at what point, does the physical skills that we use in defensive gunning of any kind and and traditional you know fighting arts what what makes them transfer to an art so this is the thing that kind of bothered me because we like to talk about oh we've got this martial art there's even a style of shooting uh, that several people wrote to me and reminded me of uh, hojutsu uh, again jutsu um, coming from I'm trying to remember the gentleman's name we've never met Jeff Hall Okay. And it's literally a martial art, and they'll wear the, the uniform, the gi, and practice with the, the dummy gun and the weapon, and they have shooting parts as well as their hand-to-hand -hand stuff. And it's systematized, and it's legit, and it's not practiced as widely as I'd like to see, actually. I'd like to have some exposure to that for him. So what's the difference between that and me doing what I'm doing now um, empty hands and doing sticks and swords. The sword part's really kind of fun too. It I've does. It, it does tend to alarm people that are around you if they're not expecting it, though. Which the sticks or the knives or the guns? Yes, uh, the, 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 yeah. the, specifically the long knives uh, does yeah. tend to create a lot of alarm. Yeah, well, and that's and that's the thing. That's why you have to practice with the curtain close. So at what point does that, does that come about? Um, one thing that kept coming up was people train with other people. And when you train with another person, especially when you're doing something that's potentially harmful, be it empty hands or um, uh, impact weapons or firearms, you have to show some respect to that person to keep them safe. And you are relying on them literally with your life on the range. To do the same with you. I mean, how many of us have been muzzle swept in a class? Oh yeah, uh, I was muzzle swept last Saturday. Uh, and it's not just students that do the muzzle sweeping. There is, again, without naming names, there is a local person who has set himself up as an instructor, and he's got some some introductory videos out, and he is muzzle sweeping people. And I've heard of him in classes muzzle sweeping people, and his co-instructor muzzle sweeping and not handling a firearm the way that I think it should be handled professionally. So at what point does that transition over? I think a lot of it is making sure you train with other people instead of just learning how to hammer a nail on a board. Shoot with people better than you and learn how to handle that firearm better. I don't get better if I don't have somebody with me that's better than I am pushing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will absolutely agree with that. And I'll even go back. You mentioned truck driving earlier. There is, There are truck rodeos all throughout the United States. I participated in them myself. And I will say this. I thought I was the absolute king of truck driving until I found out I wasn't. And I still needed to improve after 15 years of driving. And I continued to improve until I was retired at 20 years. Um 
you you can think all you want that you're the best that's ever walked the face of the earth there's somebody better you can think all you want you're the best truck driver in south dakota there's somebody better well, it's a point that Billy brought up about about the sport thing. You want to get better, and you enter your first competition, and you're the best person you've ever met. Mm-hmm. Uh, you meet more people, and I think that's an essential part of where it becomes less a simple skill and more of an art form. You start to want to get better at stuff. Now, whatever that motivation may be, it may be ego. You may want to get all the, the chicks or the guys or look cool or whatever your motivation is. At some point, it's going to start affecting how you live your life. You're going to start, maybe your diet's going to be better. Maybe your behavior's going to be better. And you, oh, you get a hot comment. Ah. I want to get another comment in here. Got a really good one that came in. We got, uh, we got. Roderick says, art is a painted picture of a landscape. Maybe an art in martial arts is a picture of actual violence. Let me think on that for a second. That's... That's deep. Art, okay, so art's something that's creative, and you're reflecting the actual, if you want to use the landscape as the analogy, I think it carries the landscape as reality that you're making a representation of by your creativity and certainly your effort and your skill would affect that. I think that follows. What do you think? I, I would say so. I, I, I would say that's that's... That's fairly accurate. Um, when I was just thinking a second ago, I, w- I want to go back a little bit. I want to branch off here. Martial art. I want. I, I'm going to say, practicing shooting handguns is actually a. How do I put this? I know it prepares you more for real world activity, real world fighting a bad guy than jujitsu than Taekwondo, than Karate, than anything else. Because when you practice, I know this specifically, when you practice Taekwondo, you cannot kick with full force when you are practicing. You must pull 100% of your kicks until it's done in real life. There's no 70% shooting of your gun. No, Every no, time you pull that trigger, that 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 is letting off with the exact same intensity. Again, Mark McYoung made the comment to me that of all the martial arts he's aware of, and he's a master of several, that shooting is the only one where what you're doing in practice is what you would actually do. The style, the taekwondo, the traditional taekwondo that I, I lived in was non-contact. You, know, you, you pulled it just shy because we were bare knuckle. You know, maybe a light contact would be acceptable. Uh, it wasn't all the pads like they do for the Olympic version, which again has has uh, metamorphosed over the years uh, with sport. And we said to show that that actually does something. Well, you kick boards. Well, boards don't move and they don't block. Well, you can kick a bag. Okay, a bag is not always available. So those are those accommodations. But it's true. With a firearm, you're doing the real thing. You're feeling the recoil. You're seeing where the holes go. One thing I do want to bring up, though, that came up in the comments from a lot of folks, both martial artists and shooters, is it starts to affect your life and how you live your life because you need to be rigorously self-honest. If I'm doing an empty hand thing, if I'm sparring with somebody Mm -hmm. and I am not as good as they are, I miss a block, I, I I catch a fist or a foot or an elbow or or get locked up, or tied up, or armbarred, or whatever. You can't blame anybody. You blame them for for practicing what you're trying to do. I can't blame my partner unless they're breaking a rule. I have to be rigorously self-honest and say, you know, if if my timing was better, if I was faster, if I was more flexible, if I learned this technique a little better, and you improve because you're honest with yourself, it's the same thing with shooting, right? Regardless. Kathy Jackson was famous. I, I love her for telling me this. Oh, it was a gravity burst. Yes. Yeah, the whole gust off. of gravity. Okay, we've all been on the range. Oh, man, it's the sights are off. It's new ammo. Um, uh, you're responsible for where the hole goes. We all know that. You're responsible for where the bullet lands. You did something. Yep. It's not what you intended or wanted. 
So becoming rigorously self-honest, I believe, becomes almost a way of life. The other, the that, other thing I will, I will draw the parallel between uh, yeah. getting trained in firearms and getting trained in martial arts is your goal in both is never, ever, ever to use it. Well, there's another thing. Exactly. I don't want to go through the paperwork. I don't like to fight because I've been in fights, and I know that I can get hurt. We can sit here and list all the surgeries I've had to have just from training stuff. I mean, some major involving titanium. When you do that, it's it's like carrying a gun. You know, we teach people, other schools teach people. You're carrying a gun, maybe you don't want to get into the road rage. If you're carrying a gun, maybe... Hey, sorry, I, I didn't mean to insult you guys. Here's 20 bucks. Here's a round on me. We're, we're going to take off now. Sorry to if we've insulted. Rather than letting the ego play, the ego that says, oh, there was a burst of wind, the sights are off, it's too ammo. Being self-honest and willing to let it go, being able to evaluate why are you doing something. Are you doing it for ego? The classic, we talk about testosterone toxicity in 18-year-olds mm -hmm. and the negative brain concept, you know, the more... The more teenage boys, sorry guys, we know it's true, right? The ladies have been telling us they're correct. The more teenage boys you have together, you have a negative brain and you actually your brain power goes down the larger the group because you want to do what, what some folks call the monkey dance. You're showing off to get status within the group and you take stupider and stupider risks rather than just leaving. A lot of us will go through scenario training and firearms where the option might be leave. And here we've got a gun, you know, if, if your only tool is a hammer, all your problems look like nails. And in training, I came and paid money to shoot stuff. I want to shoot stuff. I got my gun. It's hard to get past that, that ego. And I think that you can't do it just by going to a class. You may have an epiphany in the class. I've, I've had several and continue to have epiphanies as I learn more about myself and how I react and how I wanted to to have react, what my standards should be. And again, that's going beyond the simple mechanics of firing a firearm at, at something that needs to be shot and going to the self-improvement. For instance, we've talked about this a lot, the restaurant game. Mm -hmm. I know you and Susan like to play the restaurant game. Yes. Okay. Why don't you describe the restaurant game because you do it really well. Restaurant game, when Susan and I go to a new place to eat and we we have several regular haunts we go to on a regular basis we don't have to do that with our regular places we go to eat but if we go to a new place to eat as we go in i will play what i call the restaurant game i will look around see if there are multiple exits and see where people can come in from go out to and I will try to place myself as I sit near the main entrance and Susan will cover the secondary entrance and we'll try to pick an exit we can get out of very quickly and a second exit if there is one we can get out of it the first one is blocked. We, we try to find our fastest egress as we go in and before we ever I, I've gone as far as to say, can we get a different table when we've gone to one that is in a really mm -hmm. bad area? Yeah. I, I mentioned this a couple of podcasts back. We went to a funeral recently, and it was in a large church. I didn't know where all the doors were. So we got seated in a pew that I thought was the tactically soundest, and I got up and I walked around before the service started. So I knew where the fire extinguisher was, where the exits were. It's that paying attention to the environment, and guess what? Defensive handgun calls it the Cooper color code. Condition mm -hmm. white, yellow, orange, red. Mm -hmm. That paying attention involves you more in your world. And, and this is the word I really like, and I don't mean to be new age about it, but I, it's being more mindful of your behaviors, um, of your moral behavior, your, your propensity for me. I have a very short temper. It's caused me problems, and I have to work on it. With a gun, I really have to be careful about it. Doing, the, doing okay so far. Uh, about the respect for other people, what they might be going through. And you lift yourself up and maybe a bit apart from the rest of people because we have the responsibility on our hips or in our holsters 
mm -hmm. of, of instant life and death. You know, we get to make that judgment. We have to set ourselves apart. And I think at, at this point, rather than shooting cans at the rock pit, when you carry firearm or knife or some type of weapon or even the skill to do it with, with open and, and empty hands, and you live that avoidance and you live that being rigorously self-honest, you improve yourself, and by improving yourself, you can improve the world around you. Now, does that sound a little, a little spacey, quasi-religious? Mm. And we're responsible for our own behaviors. I, I think I'll, I'm, I'm going to go a little Han Solo here and say, get yourself a good blaster, kid. Don't worry about those that uh, religious. Uh, anyway, uh, one of your ho hokey religions and yes. yeah. Yeah, Han shot first. Uh, and, and let me get this comment in here real quick. Consider it takes years to become proficient in the martial arts. However, with even a little practice with a firearm, you can become as powerful as any evil person who wishes to do you harm. I would add to that practice and training. Yeah. But yeah, it's easier. Yeah, it's certainly the great equalizer that Samuel Colt said and why we're seeing such an influx now of, of women into uh, self-defense firearms training. Oh, and absolutely. as age takes away those physical skills from us all, as it will always inevitably do, as firearm becomes the barrier between me and getting the snot beat out of me or being killed by younger, stronger, faster, or a gang of younger, stronger, faster. Exactly. But again, those same things come into, come into play. Can I see what's happening and before it happens and avoid and, and, and avoid it, you know, to see the pattern before it happens. That's more of a lifestyle change than just the mechanical tool. I want to, we got to make a little bit of a less left turn here because I want to get some comments in from 500 Magnum. And I want to do that before oh, we get out of here for today. Good. He says, I heard California's received two new handguns for their ridiculous handgun roster. I'm going to follow it up with a couple of his yeah. more, more of his comments. He said, "I know it's obvious to us, but you'd think." Excuse me, uh, I got to go. I just switched screens and I got to catch up. I know. Uh, I know it's obvious to us, but you think even the average person that would support gun control would look at California and say, "You know, they have the restricted laws, yet they have the most crime." Rigorous yeah. self-honesty, it ain't working the way that they're doing it. <laughs> you know, we it's don't, well, I want it to work. I hope it works. Let's do something. Well, rigorous self-honesty will say, let's look at what has been done. Let's, let's actually see what the problem is. There's a problem, the AR-15. Uh, not statistically. Look at the numbers. Look at the reality of it. Be yeah. self-honest. Well, but I'll look so good if I can ban that gun and I'll get reelected. Well, you... Hmm. But you won't do a I darn read, thing. Just not an hour ago, I was reading something. This is from the 1990s about a, a, a person's first-hand account of living in Jamaica and when they confiscated all the guns because the, the racial thing is upside down there. It's mostly black and they don't like people from outside. She was a white American woman living in Jamaica. There was so much crime, the government says, ah, give us all the guns and bullets. You even have one bullet, we'll put you in a concentration camp. Her words. And crime went nuts. Oh yeah, because nobody could defend That's themselves. Looks, yeah, it looks good. You know, people people will do what they want to do. Any of us that have seen the elephant and met real nasty criminals, you know, they're not like us. No, not at all. All right, we are down at the bottom of the hour, man. We need to get out of here. Anything coming up at uh, Firearms Academy of Seattle that we need to be plugging, man? Yes, this is the busy season. Um, Actually, coming in this evening, I'm about to have dinner with him. John Farnham is coming in for a two-day class. A little late for that, but we get a lot of our guest instructors. So if you want to travel to the Pacific Northwest, we have Masada Yub coming out in July for his MAG-40 class. Um, we have our own week-long handgun that combines our, our level two defensive handgun and tactical handgun. There's five days training right there. We have Craig Douglas. We have Jared Rustin. Coming out in August, if you like the extreme close quarter stuff that, that Craig Douglas has, or I'm looking at the list here of stuff. Uh, Jared Rustin's doing a, a practical pistol marksmanship and room clearing three days. We have Steve Fisher, super trainer, coming out in September to do practical urban carving. 
more than I can get into, all kinds of stuff going on, hit the website, folks, www.firearmsacademy.com. We are now on 60 minutes, but or 30 minutes, but guess what? We're going a little late because I want to take one more swipe at a topic, Tom. We always do. <laughs> I'm going to say what you just brought up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put out a plea. If you've never had training in room clearing, please, 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 please do not attempt it. Especially do not attempt it. Yeah, how do I put this? Amen. It's, my brain is, is, is not as fluid as I would like it right now. The words are, are, are failing me, but uh, it, get some training in room clearing before you attempt room clearing. It is not what you think it is. No, they do it wrong on TV. They do it for camera angles and see the actor's face on TV. Room clearing is best done as a team event. Mm -hmm. the team that works together. If you do it yourself, it's got to be because somebody needs saving. Um, yeah, that's 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 a whole nother topic for a lot of classes and a lot of discussion. Yeah. And in solo mode, it is not fast. You don't go fast. It's it's not like a like an IDPA match or an IPSC match where you're running station to station. Uh, you can time it with a with an hourglass. Mm. Clearing a room, having done it for real as a cop, is a tedious and time-consuming thing. Best done with lots of friends and a couple of dogs. Amen. Amen. Those dogs are much better than we are at finding people yeah. anyway. Uh, we do have to go. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please do come join me tomorrow evening in about 24 hours and 30 minutes. The Saturday evening weekly bullet is going to be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, tomorrow is, let me get my calendar up here, because I can never remember. Uh, tomorrow is Mike Piwawarski and Tom Knighton. That ought to be interesting, too. Outspoken guys, we'll put it that way, who haven't worked together yet. We'll see how that one goes out. So I'm lucky you. I'm, I'm on the range all weekend teaching, so you boys have fun. Do plan on it. Everybody, thanks for watching. Podcast listeners, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.